In his book, Better Never to Have Been, David Benatar uh, talks about raising animals for meat. And he says that uh, that's a bad idea. And I understand the logic behind that. He says, um, those who advance this argument, the argument um, in favor of uh, raising animals to be eaten, fail to see that it could apply as readily to human babies that are produced only to be eaten. Okay, um, this is a very interesting argument because if you read it in a certain way, that he, then he is essentially saying, even though he doesn't realize the logic of what he's saying, or he apparently doesn't, um, his argument could be read that, well, since we're already eating cattle and chickens and fish, why not eat each other? The only real defense that is offered is the assumed repugnance that we all have to cannibalism. In other words, it's just an appeal to emotion. And this is the danger of appeals to emotion. Because if you uh, rely on emotion to make your argument and somebody challenges it, then you are helpless in the face of that challenge. Let's just say, for hypothetical sake here, that I'm going to challenge Benatar on that point. What's he going to say when I say, what's wrong with raising human babies for food? Well, I know what a lot of people are going to say. They're going to cover me with a torrent of abuse. Now, I'm not going to say that that's my argument, but I'm just pointing out the dangers of appeals to emotion. Um, <clears throat> the dangers of appeals to emotion were made most manifest um, in the early 20th century when the totalitarians came along. For the longest time, a lot of people said, common decency is something you simply don't challenge and it's just taken as a given. People didn't actually live like that, of course, because we had the hellish slaughter of the First World War. But it was assumed that one didn't have to make a case against murder, against genocide, against all these other things that came along with uh, the rise of totalitarianism. Well, the totalitarians, um, Hitler, Stalin, simply said, all your sentimental ideas are so much rubbish, and I don't subscribe to any of them, and... Um, you can just forget about it. I, I am a barbarian, in Hitler's famous words. We are barbarians. We admit we're barbarians. We're animals. We admit we're animals and predators, and we don't have any interest whatsoever in any of your stupid sentimentality. The world is a jungle. This is just survival of the fittest. End of story. And because all of these ideas of Western uh, liberalism and, and democracy and freedom and human rights and everything were just sort of taken for granted for so long, the intellectual world simply wasn't ready for the challenge that the totalitarians posed to these ideas. And this is precisely the sort of thing that Benatar is uh, doing. He's simply relying upon our revulsion against cannibalism in his insistence that um, eating meat is as bad as eating humans. He you know, we are already eating meat, though, so, okay, then it's not much of a step towards us eating humans. That's the danger of the appeal to, to emotion. It's not just a dishonest trick. It's actually a dangerous idea, because what you're doing is you're just assuming that human revulsion is enough to defeat a particularly um, undesirable argument. Somebody's going to challenge that. Somebody's going to challenge that, and you won't be ready if you rely on that sort of thing. If you ask me, Benatar's book is absolutely riddled with this sort of thing, riddled with little innuendos where the, it's just, you should be disgusted by this, you should be terrified by this, you should be horrified um, by this, this evil act, this terrible thing, but he never quite explains why we should be horrified by it. A lot of people make their arguments like that. That's why <clears throat> I generally shy away from that sort of thing, or I avoid discussing uh, things with people who rely upon abusive language, uh, disgusting metaphors, um, extreme uh, shock language, that sort of thing. Um, not so much because I'm worried about the fact that, that logic is being subverted here, but it's simply I find it just so incredibly weak that um, it's actually dangerous when 
you get somebody who will strut right into the void that is created by um, appeals to emotion and demolish it just like that, as quickly as Hitler demolished the ideas of Western liberalism. He just said for in, in one little uh, sentence, he summed it all up, take your whole civilization and pour it down the sink, it doesn't interest us one little bit. Understand now? And then he put that point of view into practice. I understand that I'm going to catch it here for um, for uh, Godwin's law, but well, there you go. We'll uh, I'll, I'll deal with that. But what I'm saying is, when you start making odious comparisons as your argument, you're actually um, weakening your own argument, if you ask me. And in in a certain sense, you're relying upon revulsion to take the place of logic, which is why we have blasphemy laws and that sort of thing, because you're not allowed to question these things. You can't think these things through. We must prevent debate on a particular subject simply because we don't have any answer to it. I understand the argument that says that eating meat is cannibalism. I understand that. Um, but I'll put it this way. Again, if you're going to make that kind of argument, then you're going to have to justify, um, without resorting to crazy personal attacks, because you brought the cannibalism anger into this, you're going to have to make a case um, opposing cannibalism. I understand the idea that, that it's kind of revolting when you think about it. We're all on this planet, this island, um, and we're all creatures, children of Mother Earth, as it were, and we're all eating each other. Okay, that's the way it's always been. I understand that. What, what we make of that fact is up to us, whether it's good or whether it's bad. I take the view it just is, because we stop eating meat, meat as human beings, and we, we you know, become like the Janes, and we, we carry whisk brooms in fr uh, to sweep the ground in front of us to make sure we don't hurt insects. We only eat plants that we can pick something off of without actually harming the plant. Okay, we, we will have absolved ourselves of the blame for all of the, the, the harm that gets caused when it comes to uh, being carnivorous, but carni uh, the, the, the fact of animals preying on each other will continue to take place. Um, we all feed on death. Just go to, uh, go to any forest, and of course the leaves every uh, fall, fall down on the ground, they rot, and they nourish the roots below. That's just a fact. A lot of people say that that's God's creation, that's just the way it is, and it's the way of nature, etc., etc. I'm not going to comment on it that way. I'm not going to say that that's wonderful or natural or the circle of life or anything like that. What I'm saying is, it just is. Um, it's just, that's the way it is. What we make of that, what we make of the fact that all of us on this island of planet Earth who are here eating each other, um, is a value judgment. If we're going to be disgusted by it, we're going to be disgusted by it. If we're going to accept it as just a fact of life, we're going to accept it as just a fact of life. Here in the West, we tend to be desensitized, I suppose, or perhaps hypersensitized to the ideas of eating meat. But you, you go to most third world countries, and people are much closer to death and and slaughter and uh, and the gore that comes up to your elbows when you're uh, slaughtering an animal or um, or making sausages or doing anything of that nature. Go to any third world wet market in a hot country, and you'll come face to face with what meat eating is in all its blood and gore and death. The place actually smells like death. It, you have this strange smell that doesn't really smell like blood and it doesn't smell like anything you've ever smelled before. On a hot, sticky day, the uh, the abattoir, the wet market, the fish slash meat market with organs hanging there off big hooks with people standing there whisking the armies of flies away from it. These people who actually do this are used to the fact that um, that that's what the consumption of meat is. The ironic thing is, these people who actually slaughter these animals are much are on a much closer and intimate basis with them throughout the animal's daily life than we are here, even though here we're more appalled by the fact that this sort of thing is taking place. Most people in, uh, in uh, a lot of third world countries keep pigs, unless it's a Muslim country or something. Uh, keep pigs or chickens or something in their backyard, and they, they, they're essentially, while the animals are alive, they're treated like pets. And then when they're slaughtered, oftentimes 
as in the case of some people I know in Asia, the people who actually raise the animals have to leave and get someone else to slaughter them because they become fond of them and they say, please be nice about it when you kill this animal. You might think that that's silly, but that actually does happen. People do become fond of the chickens and goats and, and pigs and stuff that they keep in their backyards. Whereas here, we just go to the store and we pick it off the shelf. So even the even an intimate contact with the cannibalistic nature of human beings as a species doesn't necessarily have a terribly negative value attached to it. A lot of people who like to watch these nature shows where you see a, a cheetah or something uh, attacking and goring, uh, I don't know, a, a wildebeest or something like that, um, are shocked by this. And I'm not going to say that it's perfectly natural and it's the circle of life or anything like that. But if you're going to take the argument that that's horrible, then the other argument of it is that, that happens every day and that's just the way things are. What, what value we place on the brutalization and the brutal realities of the cannibalistic nature of us as a species and just about every other species out there um, is a value judgment. If you're going to sort of say that the fact that we're all eating each other on the third rock from the sun is a bad thing, you're going to have to justify justify that, if you ask me. Appeals to emotion just don't cut it. Thank you.